Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are gonna over dye 100 grams of this mint green Stroll fingering weight yarn. Stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I dye the bare form all the time. But sometimes you can get a color on clearance and that might be useful. And I just wanna show that when you start with a pastel color, you can over dye it and get a lot of different beautiful colors. Uh, and it can work just as well. Well, maybe not just as well, but at the very least, a pastel color, especially if you're gonna dye it something more saturated, this mint green should not have a huge impact on our final color. But again, it depends on how much color you put over it, how much this uh, pale mint green would make a difference. Just like if you are over dyeing a uh, bare yarn and some is a little bit more pigmented than another, it may not make a huge difference overall, but it could as that original color gets a little bit deeper and more saturated. We are gonna over dye this mint stroll using two different depths of shade of Dharma Training Company's Aubergine or eggplant color. I picked a purplish a color, a saturated one, but I thought that it would be nice to over dye this green with something slightly less expected. Similar to how once upon a time I over dyed highlight or yellow with Wilton's Violet, just to show that you don't have to stay in the warm-ish tones. The safest choices would be to use like a blue or another green. Uh, those you can easily conceptualize would work well. And purple isn't the most wild choice. Maybe orange uh, would be a little more, I don't know how that would go. But again, it all comes down to the proportion and concentration. I put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and measured out two different amounts of this aubergine acid dye, using equipment that is just dedicated for dyeing yarn and is never used for food. I measured out half a gram and then approximately 0.125 grams of this acid dye. So that way when we dye the yarn, they have about a difference of four between the final depth of shade. Since we're dyeing 50 grams of yarn, the depths of shade would be 1%, so an equivalent of one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn, and then a quarter percent would be the other equivalent. I dissolved the dye in unspecified volumes of plain hot tap water uh, because we'll be adding this to jars and filling it up so the actual volume doesn't matter. What matters is the total amount of dye we're adding to each of these 50 gram skeins. Before we dye the yarn, I am going to go ahead and add removable nylon zip ties to the yarn and I'm gonna go pre-soak it in plain tap water for 20 to 30 minutes. But I do want to note that one of these skeins did have a knot on it, uh, which I don't often find on Knit Picks yarn, but since I found one, I figured I'd point it out. I think the actual weights that I weighed out were 5, 0.51 grams and 0.13 grams. It is really hard to measure out small quantities of, oh wait, no, this is the bigger one. Uh, it is hard to measure out small quantities of dye just because, well, you know, the scale's not that accurate. So that can be rather difficult. If you wanna have something that is easily reproducible, I officially recommend that you make, say, a 1% stock solution, which would be dissolving one gram of dye in 100 milliliters of water, and then we would take 50 mils for the half gram, or uh, 12 and a half milliliters for the 0.125 grams. So that would have been significantly easier than what we ended up doing. The reason why I am using mason jars today to dye our yarn is that we can treat them both the same and look at them side by side really easily along the way. But also, practically speaking, I am using all of my dye pots today. And so doing it things this way means that I can, if I get that last bit of dye, uh, it means that I can set more projects up because I can leave these at room temperature until I have a dye pot free to go heat set these 
and another project that I'm also going to do in mason jars. <laughs> But I actually may not be able to do them at this, in the same pot because I think the smaller die pot will fill up first and I can only fit uh, three of these jars in that one. So anyway, <laughs> that's the reasoning for using the mason jars. Before we add the yarn here, I do want to add more water volume. So I'm going to increase the water level till these jars are about half full. It's approximate. All right, and now we have no acid in here yet. so. Let's go ahead and add our pre-soaked yarn. All right, and we're gonna add 50 grams to each. And you can get a sense of that purpley color that we have. And I am sort of dipping it in just to try to get as much coverage as we can with the yarn on the color. And the reason why Try not to make a mess. The reason why I wanted to do two different depths of shade was that we can see like how much of a difference it makes for covering up this color. I do think I want to go ahead and let the yarn sit here in these jars for a little bit uh, before we add more water and we add some acid. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait 15 minutes. Okay, it has been 15 minutes. Now I am going to top these off with some water and we are going to quickly and carefully just stir by raising and lowering and wiggling. And now we will add some acid. So I am going to add a tablespoon of white vinegar to each of these jars. This is not a little amount of acid. We're gonna raise, lower, and wiggle to distribute this. So there's still a lot of color in these jars, but with that soak, we'll likely still have tonal variation, but it should help the coverage a little bit because we are fairly crowded. All right, but now let's go start heat setting these. And actually, both of the colors are beautiful. I mean, this one I would say feels very aubergine. And that one is sort of a dusty purple. Yes, it's a purple, not a brown. It's not a muck. <laughs> okay, but we're gonna heat set them. This is my eight quart pot with a pasta insert. And I'm now going to add these to mason jars and turn on the heat. Uh, you don't really want to add the mason jars directly to super hot water because you really don't want the glass to crack. Uh, so you want to heat things up slowly. <laughs> but I'm gonna find a cover for this and cover this pot. And the goal is to heat things for at least 30 minutes. But it will certainly take time for the bath to come up to temp. I don't often cover my pots, but that will help trap the heat inside here. And since this is a more double boiler type setup, uh, it'll help things warm up faster to heat set the yarn in those two jars. Okay, I am now gonna turn off the heat and let's look and see. <laughs> this one has floated up almost completely and maybe even spilled over but it is pretty much cleared. I do see some color in the pot. I think that one of these definitely bubbled over a little bit. There's a hint of some color in there, but uh, pretty good. I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add an extra tablespoon of vinegar to each, then quickly raise and lower. The jars are still too hot themselves for me to touch. Uh, but what I can do, I'm like checking the heat of the sides, is I can remove the pot and 
set this aside uh, so that way the yarn can cool. Um, I'll leave it on the stove until it's a little bit less hot and then I can set it aside so it can cool a little bit faster. But it's still definitely going to have plenty of time uh, in those jars to cool off. It has been over an hour for sure. And there is some color in there that surprises me. It is still warm, so it hasn't cooled completely. Look at this one. Yeah, like it starts to look clear with the yarn still in there because you think it's a reflection. But there is just a bit of color left, and I'm not really sure about it. I mean, it is still warm. So I think I'm going to continue to let things cool. This is not a color I've used a lot, so it's not one that I'm super familiar with. But when things are cool, we'll go ahead and wash it, even with some residual color in these pots, because some colors don't necessarily absorb completely, even though most do. So we'll be back. It is now the next morning, and let's remove our overdyed yarn from the respective jars. There's a bit, I think this is our lighter one. There's some pigment in there. Let's look at our deeper purple. Yeah, there's still some pigment in here as well. I'm gonna set this aside, but we do have two really, really beautiful purples that work together in a very nice and subtle way. And so since there's water still in, or since there's color still in the jars, it's not a surprise to see some color in the water right here. But hopefully that will resolve relatively quickly. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of some clear dish soap. And the good news is that I am not seeing further bleeding. So some colors have pigments that won't bind, uh, and that is fine. Am I seeing? No, not really. So I am going to go ahead and wash uh, the soap out of this yarn, put it through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and oh, I'm now regretting I didn't take a snip of that original mint color. But, <laughs> so I don't think I have any mint to compare this to, but we certainly transformed the color. Here is the finished dry yarn, where we over dyed our mint straw with a 0.25% depth of shade or a 1% depth of shade of Dharma Acid Dye Aubergine slash Eggplant. The little paint chip that I have on the top of the bottle of the eggplant dye looks like it is a lot more pink than I think that it actually is. And when I did crude swatches of this color in the past, that color that I saw is very consistent with this nice deep purple that we see here. I now regret that I didn't do a depth of shade side by side with some bare yarn because I think that that would be a really fun comparison because then on this paler 0.25% depth of shade, we would be able to see how much that mint green really influenced the color because I would say right here, although this is a dusty purple, I think eggplant is not a bright, it is a deep purple and has some muted character to it already. So I think that the mint didn't necessarily contribute that much to our overall colors here. All of this is to really say that if you want to pick a non-white yarn for your dyeing projects and you're planning to dye them a more saturated color, because I would say even our Paler. This is not a pastel. This is a reasonable mid-level saturation. So as long as you aren't wanting a super pastel color, if you pick a commercially dyed pastel, you pretty confident you can be pretty confident in your ability to over dye it. Where you might start to have more trouble is if you are starting with a really saturated or really really bright 
And by bright, I'm not talking about yellow, but say a bright neon pink or green, that can some, then become a lot harder to over dye and that original hue may have more of an impact in your final color. What color would you have picked for over dyeing this mint stroll? I think, I'm not positive, but I think this may be the last of all the mint colored yarn that I got in that collection many years ago, but I do have other commercial colorways that I would like to over dye. So if you would like to see more, please make sure you stay subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And if you'd like early access and some behind the scenes sneak peeks to the content I create here, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find the link down in the video description. I love these skeins together and I think I'm gonna list them as a set in my Etsy shop because I don't think that they really want to separate from one another. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And as I said, I have more over dyeing projects that I have both done in the past and more that I would like to do in the future. So if you have any specific types of yarn you would like me to over dye, please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.